In this video I'm going to show how to build a magnetometer using an Atmega328 processor and Hall Effect sensors. It has a 3 axis sensor that can detect up to 220 gauss and a 1 axis sensor that can detect up to 1500 gauss. Let's start with the schematic. We start with this battery connector which is a JST connector for a 12 volt LiPo and then we move on to a switch and an LM317 that regulates the input voltage down to 5 volts for the Atmega and the sensors. So this is the Atmega328. It doesn't use an Arduino, it's just the chip by itself. This 3-pin header is for programming it, and the Hall Effect sensors are connected to it via the analog input pins. We have three A1308 sensors and one 1309 for the high range probe. Next is the I squared C bus, and that powers the display, which is a 16 by 2 character LCD display. I begin by 3D printing a case that will hold the LCD display and the board and then creating the circuit board itself on a piece of one-sided perf board. This is the 16x2 character LCD display, and it has an I2C adapter, so you only need four pins to connect it. Looks like it powers up without a problem. And here are the Hall Effect sensors I'm going to use to make the 3-axis probe. And here's the sensors all soldered up. I've got one for X, Y, and Z axes. Next I take one of my Atmega 328s and burn the bootloader to it. You can find a link in the description of how to do this. After I burn the bootloader, the chip is ready to be installed on my board. Now I'm ready to put everything in the case. I install the screen first, and then I have to install the four wires that deliver power to the screen and the serial data and serial clock lines for the high squared C bus. Once that's done, I fastened out the board, and then I'm ready to program the Atmega chip. Next, I start coding. I stu- Wait a minute. I think there's something I'm forgetting. Before I start doing this coding, I need to figure out how my sensors work. So we're going to look at the data sheet for the A1309 and 1308. The Hall Effect sensor is going to put out a voltage based on how strong the magnetic field it sees. So for the A1309, we see that it puts out 9 millivolts per gauss. That'll be important later in the video. So let's return to our code and upload a quick test program to see if these work. If I move a permanent magnet back and forth against the sensor, you can clearly see on the graph that the reading is changing based on the distance. Now I've changed my program to send those numbers directly to the LCD display. Now you might be wondering why all those readouts show about 510, 512 when absolutely nothing's happening. And this requires a little bit of math to translate what's going on. An Atmega328 uses a 10-bit analog to digital converter meaning it looks at a voltage between 0 and 5 volts and converts it to a value between 0 and 1024. So the Hall sensor's output at 0 gauss is actually not 0, it's 2.5 volts. So if we divide 2.5 by 5 and multiply it by 1024, that means the Atmega's 
analog to digital converter would read 512, which is about what we see on the LCD screen when there's no magnet being held up to the sensors. The maximum output of the Hall Effect sensor is about 4.5 volts, and the minimum is about 0.5 volts, which translates to a maximum on the ADC of 922 and a minimum of 102. Now if we divide these differences by 1024, multiply by 5, and then divide again by our 0 0.009 volts per gauss, we get 222 gauss as our maximum and minus 222 gauss as our minimum. Now luckily we can sidestep coding all that math into our program by simply using the map function to translate the highs and lows of what we have to the highs and lows of what we want. So now when we use the magnetometer, we're seeing the actual values of the magnetic field in Gauss. So here's the finished assembly. One set of wires is for the high range probe that reads up to 1500 Gauss and the other set of wires is for the three-axis probe that reads up to 220 gauss. So let's start by testing it on this ceramic ring magnet that I took out of a magnetron. Next I've got an N52 magnet. Now the high range probe will max out long before I reach the surface because right at the surface of these magnets there's a field of up to 14,000 gauss. But if I turn my probe to the side and position it just right, you'll see that the magnetic field goes to almost zero. And that's because dead center of the magnet the magnetic field lines would be exactly parallel to the face of the sensor. Next we'll check out a cheap fridge magnet. I found that the 220 gauss limit was really restrictive for the three axis probe. So I had to limit it to much weaker magnets so that I didn't max it out. But overall I'm really happy with this build and I think it will really come in handy for future projects.